Alrighty. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jim, for the invitation. It is really an honor to be speaking to this uh, audience. And um, I, I, first of all, I want to say um, again, even though you mentioned this in during my my introduction, that I am a mathematician. I am not an archaeologist. <laughs> so, um, and I also wanted to say that most of the mathematics that you will see here is mathematics that I have been teaching during my years at Miller's University in my ethnomathematics courses in for uh, non-math math majors. So this, I'm talking about history majors, art majors, archaeology, anthropology. Uh, uh, so those are where the students that were taking the, the course in which I would be teaching some of the mathematics that you're going to be seeing here. And um, here in the, um, in I'm trying to, there. Um, the, the title picture is one of my favorite pictures of the trips that I used to take with students every summer. And this is with the help of Ed Barnhart, uh, the director of the My Exploration Center. So I did uh, travel with, with, with him. He helped me then to uh, uh, run this course, this math course, uh, which uh, focused on the, on the mathematics of the Maya. And I also traveled with, well, with Ed many times and my students and also with Christopher Powell. I also traveled with uh, Michael Groff and Alonso Mendes as well. All right, so the, like I said, this is one of my very favorite pictures. When you could uh, really get into the um, Temple of the Warriors and um, like you, you wrote it there, play around the pillars. Right now you cannot even get close to them. You can just see them from far, but you cannot touch them. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, begin by, by presenting the, the, the numbers um, uh, the Maya numbers and um, this in this way, like vigesimal system, but then also I'm going to introduce the quasi vigesimal system or chronological system as well. So one dot for one, two for two and so on, for five, a bar, and then six, a bar and a dot and so on and so forth until we get to 19, which would be five, 10, 15, three bars and four dots. And then here you see three symbols for zero, and there's many other uh, symbols besides the, the three that you, you can see here. And on the drawing on the left, that's from um, uh, Mark Van Stone and Michael Coe's uh, book. And this is uh, then presenting the, um, the numbers together with the, the head glyph representations. That, that is also uh, very, very common. Um, and I am going to present here the spoken uh, numbers. And this is in the, in the language, in one of the, the many la Maya languages, the Yucatec. And um, I, I wrote a few of the numbers here. And the, the, the bar that you see at the bottom in red, um, I wrote, I, I, um, wrote it because it will help you understand why the numbers, for example, the number 42, let me use the pen here to highlight. Uh, so for example, the number 42, which is written ka tu iox kal, if you translate that, well, ka is the, the number two, so that would be two and the two E, it would be added into, and then ox, ox is the number three, as you see here, and ox cal would, would then represent in the third 20th. So this is saying that two has been added in the third 20th. So if we look at the red line, so here we have the first 20th, the second 20th. So we are in the third 20th here, which begins at 40. So when we say ka to ioxcal would be two added over here. That, that's why it is 42, okay? And also, for example, the number 34, that would be 
Um, it's a little bit different. You don't need the line to, to explain that one. Um, 34 would be can, which is four. You can see four over here. Lahun to cal. So can lahun in this case would be, because lahun here is 10, so can lahun would be 14. Two cal would be in this case, the two would be saying uh, added to cal, which is cal is 20. So it's a different uh, way of expressing the number. And, and in that case, we didn't need to look at the, at the red line that I devised there to explain, explain the number. Now, there is a little bit of a decimal system within this vigesimal um, spoken uh, 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 numbers. And here I put the numbers, like uh, took some of them from the previous page. And for example, the numbers between three um, up to uh, nine. And then if you compare with the number 13, so that would be Oxlahun, like three tens, 13, 3, 10, and then up to Bolon Lahun. So it's like, like almost like using like a decimal system within the vigesimal system as well. And um, next, I'll, I'll go immediately into the uh, representation of the numbers and comparing here in this table, the vigesimal system compared with the chronological system, which is the one we're going to use for in, in, in the, in the, I, I'm going to be using in the presentation. So for example, in the vigesimal system, I'm going to look at the, at this, at this number here, vigesimal. So it means that like, if we are writing the number here, it would be the, the, the elements like say five in this case would be multiplied by, by the, the lowest power of 20, which is 20 to the zero power. So we end up keeping the number five as it is. Next, we have three, and the three will be multiplied by 20 to the first power, so that would be 20 times times three, that would be 60. Next, we have the number one that would multiply by 20 to the second power, so that would be 400, we get 400, and then the number 10 multiplied to 20 to the third power, which would be 8,000, we multiply 80,000. So when we add all the numbers, we get this and I'm writing it here. I presented it here in Arabic uh, 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 notation. That would be using simply vigesimal the powers. But it turns out that there are no records of numbers written in vigesimal form at all. There's none. And they are all in chronological system. I'm, I'm gonna use that word instead of the quasi vigesimal. So I'll explain the same number here, which is the one I'm highlighting here. Uh, same number, but if we use the chronological system, then we take um, five, which would be five times 20 to the zero. So we keep five. Then we have three here, three times 20 to the first power. So far is the same, but the, the change comes here in the third term. In the third term, we have one unit, but instead of multiplying 20 to the second power, like in the previous case, we're gonna multiply by 18 times 20 instead of 20 times 20. So in, instead of multiplying 400, we're multiplying 360. So that's what we would get here. And from then on for higher terms, we keep multiplying times 20, times 20, times 20, but there is an 18 in between. So that's why when we get the 10, the 10 here, instead of multiplying by a south, and like in the previous case in the uh, strictly vigesimal, we're gonna multiply by 7,200. And when we add all those numbers, we get 72,425. So that would be the way we're gonna be uh, uh, dealing with the, with the numbers that are represented and to do, to do the computations, and especially when dealing with, uh, with dates. And I would say to do the computations, like, like if I, I'm gonna, when I use a grid for doing multiplication and division, I'm gonna use the vigesimal. But then once you get the, the answer in vigesimal form, you can immediately convert into chronological and then work from then on. Okay, so notation for the numbers, like, like the second one, which is the one I was using as an example would be, 
uh, 10, which is, which is that, so that would be the 10, then one, then three, and then five. That would be the Western way of, of writing the number in a, in, a, in a quick way already. And I, I should say here that in chronological system, which is the, the one over here, the second term, that's the one, this is the second term, it will, it will never be higher than 17. So by, that's why I wrote there, it's never 18 or 19. It's the maximum would be 17. Whereas the other numbers, all the other terms and above that, they could be up to 19. So they can have 18 and, and, and 19. So keep that in mind for uh, what we're gonna be doing. And also we should keep in mind that if we have, let's say, I said the maximum here is 17, but if we do have 18 units, then 18 units in the second term would be equivalent to one unit above. And similarly, if we have, if we have here 20 units in the third term would be one unit above and, and so on and so forth. We're gonna see that when we do some of the computations. Okay, so first I'm gonna be multiplying Maya numbers, again in chronological form, by a single digit just a single digit. And then I'll go into multiplying by 20 and then more than, than um, uh, higher, higher numbers. And I keep in mind here, re reminding everybody that 18, 18 units of the second term would be equal to one unit of the third term. And I have a, a random number here, okay? And um, uh, if we multiply that numbers times two, just simply multiply. So it would be two times zero would be zero, two times two would be four, and two times eight would be 16, that's it. So it would be very simple as long as you don't have to trade. And by that, I mean, if you run into a number here, for example, 18 or more over here, um, uh, 20 or more or 20 or more here, okay? But we didn't in that case, and we will in the next case. So if we take this number over here, um, and we multiply times four, for example, then I'll multiply, then times zero would be zero. And I'm using Arabic numbers because it's gonna be easier than to do the, the conversion to, to, to the chronological one form. And um, so I had um, then eight times four, I have 32, two times four, I have eight. Right, so I wrote them in, in, in Arabic, but then I'm gonna do the conversion. So zero is zero here. And then 32, well, I have 32, that's too much. So I will need to trade, but 32 can be written as 18 plus 14. And as we see here, 18 units over here will be one unit above. And if I move those 18 units and trade them by one here, I am left here with 14. That's the 14 we have here. And since above I had eight plus the one unit that I traded, then I end up with the nine. So that would be the answer. And this would be then the computation using the, the Arabic numbers. So it looks very simple because it's just a single number. So let's see here. Um, uh, if we multiply numbers now in chronological form as, as well, but by 20, which, which I would say is probably one of the most common computations they had to do. And so I put here a random, like in general, uh, A, B, C, D, E uh, uh, numbers and think about think all the time chronological form, chronological form. And I'm gonna multiply by 20. So as I did with the previous cases, I will simply multiply by 20 every single one of the terms. So here we go. A, I get 20A, B, I get 20B, C, I get 20C. And in the D, remember this is the one that is uh, uh, 18, uh, units here would be one above. So I decided to rewrite the 20D that I'm gonna get here and I split it into 18D plus 2D, okay? And then E multiply 20, get 20E. So now I need to rewrite this because all the entries have are exceeding the maximum number. And as I explained, for example, 20, I have 20E at the very bottom. And each 
20 here is a one unit above. That same, same uh, uh, reasoning that we did with the 18, one 18 in here would be an, a dot above. So, but in this case, I have 20 E's. So 20 times the, the, the uh, sorry, E times 20. So I'm gonna get zero here and I'm gonna put above E because I have E 20s. And then I keep the 2D. So I have here 2D plus E and this 18D that I have over here, like I said before, 18 units over here would be one unit above, but I have D18s. So I get D above. And then over here, I have 20C. So I, I have C20s and every, every 20, it's one above. So I get C over here. And similarly, this one goes one up and this one gone up and I get that number. So that would be sort of a formula for multiplying times 20. But then there's only one detail that you would have to be careful once we have the real numbers there that if you, if you have a number over here that would be 18 or 19 or above that, because actually I have the numbers here could be up to 53, then you would have to trade, but that's gonna be okay already. So that would be multiplying times 20. And so then the question would be, how about, um, okay. Uh, before multiplying into uh, more numbers, I wanna I wanted to show you here one of the pages of the Dresden Codex because of the multiplications that you see in here, and uh, this is um, the god that that you see over here is the god K, which represents Mars, and you see multiples of seventy eight using the chronological number system. So for example, here I'm highlighting, this would be three times 20 plus 18, so that would be 78. Here you have uh, seven times 20 plus uh, 16, and then that would be 78 times two. So that would be 156. Next one, it's uh, 78 times three, that's 234 if you convert. Next you have, 78 times four, 17 times uh, five, six and seven and so on. And the one here is, um, it's this one, which I wrote it over here is representing 780. So question would be why 780 and why, why Mars? And it's because 780 is the synodic period of Mars. Actually, the, the real one is 779.94 days, and the Maya had it 780 days. So they, they did the, the products, and probably because these are very simple one, I would guess it was um, repeated addition only in here, okay? Uh, but then there are um, um, uh, places where they, they did uh, more elaborated and um, computations and multiplications. And for example, the, uh, like I said, 780 is the Mars synodic period. The least common multiple, exactly what the words are saying, the least common multiple between 780 and 365, which is the, 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 the number of days in their half calendar that we're gonna see later, uh, I can decompose the number as 156 times 5 times 73, which is literally saying that 156 revolutions of the Earth, of 365, equals 73 revolutions of Mars. And they knew that because that there's uh, depictions of the number as well. So just wanted to say, why do we bother with multiplication? And by the way, the numbers you see, uh, the images you see here in, in turquoise are sulking dates. Uh, the, the, the one is um, one is three sib and the other one is three x. And if you look at, we're gonna see the sulking calendar soon. Uh, the difference between the two days is 78 uh, days, okay? Already, so I'm showing you in, in this slide a paragraph of the Diego de Landa's book in which he's explaining 
what he, the way he sees the, these people doing computations. And I highlighted here the end and after the translation, they make their counts on the ground or something smooth. So I'm gonna use something smooth to do the computations, like a, like a grid, which is actually, that was suggested by Hector Calderon in 1968. And there's also, uh, they have found uh, grid patterns that are scratched on the in, on stack of floors, um, but the, it could be maybe patoli boards, like the one you see in the background of this slide, that's a patoli board, but it could be, that uh, could be a patoli board, a game that they used to play, or it could be made for doing the computations, okay? And so here on the next slide, I'm gonna show you, and this is Calderon's method for multiplying Maya numbers. It is very, very simple. So in this case, I would say, yes, let's use some, a, a, a different method rather than repeated addition. Because if you are gonna, you're gonna do repeated addition, that is very limiting when the numbers are getting larger and larger. Already, so we're gonna multiply the number 66 times 22, and I'm gonna rewrite 66. That would be three times 20 plus six. That would be 66. And here we have 22 because it's one times 20 plus two. So I take the two numbers and I put them around this grid. It doesn't matter which one I put here, it could be either one because of the commutativity of multiplication. So I put here 22 and I put over here 66. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start multiplying the, the numbers, okay? For example, three times one is three. And like question, how would they have done that? Well, multiplication with repeated additions because these numbers are small numbers. Then we're gonna do here six times one, that is six. Then here we do three times two, then we get six. And then we have six times two, and then we get 12. So we fill all the possible products that we can. And now we're gonna add diagonally. So I'm gonna add here, um, the, the first diagonal, and I'll put that number there, that would be 12. That's the only number I cannot add with anything else. I'm gonna add those two, second diagonal, and put it right there, that's another 12. And then my third diagonal would be that, and I get that, and that would be the answer for the product. So that would be representing uh, 1,152 in our Arabic numbers. And if we wanna write it in, chronological, because actually we did it using vigesimal, you could rewrite the number using, um, um, instead using the number and then fitting how many 360s can I fit in the number and then take the remainder and figure out the rest. So we, we could do that. Okay, so that's for multiplication higher. And I wanted to show you this uh, it's it's funny. Some some sometimes people that I've shown this they laugh because it's like like how what the hell this what is this really representing? And it's a multiplication table, and actually it's half of it because it's multiplying. And I am going to say, for example, if we multiply the number four times the number six here, then we figure out that the answer, we know that the answer is 24. Four times six is 24. So it would be 120 plus four. And one of my students did this, Nicholas Hale in a class of 15. And, and this student, he was a math major that did his thesis on, on uh, the arithmetic of the Maya. And he, uh, he presented his findings and the way he would, would develop the multiplication division and all that uh, at a national meeting of the Mathematical Association of America. And he won a national award for this. So it's very, very, very nice. Okay, and I'm gonna show you now the division. So the dividing Maya numbers would be, okay, um, most of you probably know that you can do division by doing subtraction. 
And if you have never heard of it, you will now because it's very, very simple. And maybe the Maya did their division because it's needed when we do the conversions. Maybe they did it using repeated subtraction. As so maybe for simple multiplications, we said how they did the multiplication, repeated addition for simpler numbers. So I'll show you here a method for dividing the numbers by using repeated subtraction. And I have the number 93 and the number 21. So then I wrote the number 93 here, four times 20, that would be 80 plus the number uh, 13. So we get uh, 93. And the number 21, one times 20 plus one, we get 21. And you see the minus there, because as I said, I'm gonna do it by subtraction. So we're gonna keep subtracting, subtracting 21, 21, 21, all the way until we cannot subtract anymore, which means until the number on the left will be a smaller number than the number on the right. All right, so here we go. Subtract the first time. And instead of having four dots here, I'm gonna have three. Instead of having 13, I'm gonna have 12. Then I subtract again and I get two up and then I get 11 here and I can keep subtracting. Yes, I can keep subtracting until I have to stop because the number I have on the left is the number nine and I cannot subtract 21 from nine. So end of the, of the process and we get the remainder. That's gonna be the remainder on the division. And uh, we have the dividend, which is 93 or this one here, the divisor, which is that, and then I have a remainder. So where is the quotient? Well, the quotient is, I'll show you here, it's the number of steps that we did to get to the remainder. So that's why I put it in red here. We did one step, two step, three step, four step, and we got the remainder. Four steps, therefore the quotient um, is four. That's it end of the, the process, and we can write it like using the Arabic numbers, 93 divided by 21 would be four, that's a quotient, plus the remainder nine divided by 21, the way we, we write the division after we're done. So it's a very simple method to do division using subtraction. But there's a caveat here because the problem begins if I give you a division in which, like this one over here, how about dividing the number 278 divided by six, okay? The problem will be that in order, we could do the same, we write 278 and start subtracting six and six and six. The problem is that we're gonna have to do 46 steps in order to get to the remainder. Totally unpractical. So, and, and it could be even worse depending on what the quotient would be in the division that you are presented you have to do. So I think that this method is unpractical for that type of divisions. And I'll show you another. So here we're gonna use a grid. And, and um, uh, like think about the way the way you used to do division by hand in decimal form. So all I did was just think, use the method that we use for decimal and use it for in vigesimal. So that's all you're gonna see. So it's gonna look sort of familiar, I hope. So I'm gonna divide the numbers that I presented there that, that is unpractical to do with subtraction. 278, which is this number over here. So it would be 13 times 20 plus this, uh, uh, um, number and then divided by six. So I'm gonna put the number here. That is, this is the dividend that will be 278. I'm gonna put the divisor there and I'm gonna start doing the division. So like you can imagine, I'm gonna put the quotient here. So what do I need to do? I need to find a number here in such a way that when I multiply that number times six, uh, it fits and the closest possible with the number 13. So the answer is two. So two times six is 12, and then I subtract and I get one, 
All right, so far it looks very similar to what you, you, you were used to doing with decimal. And now I need to bring that number down. All right, so I'm gonna highlight this number here because tilt your head to the, to the left. And, and this, is, this is the Maya number you have, think vigesimal. So the number you I'm, I'm highlighting here is really one times 20 plus 18. So this number I'm, I'm highlighting here is the number 38 already. So when I look for a number over here, over here, it has to be a number in such a way that when I multiply six, it fits in 38 and the closest possible. So that would be six. Okay, so I put six there, six times six is 36. So now think again, vigesimal, I need to write the number 36 in Maya. That would be 120 plus 16. So that's 120 plus 16, ready? And now I can subtract and I get zero there and I get two. And I'm done, I know that my division is done because the number I have here is smaller than the divisor. And that's what, what they taught you, what stop the division when that happens and you're done. So the um, quotient, which we got here to six put in like, like um, the Maya number like, uh, would be 46 because this is, this is two times 20 plus six. And then the remainder it's, it's two and that's the end. So we have, the final answer, and if we write it in Arabic, would be 278 divided by six would be 46 plus two six. So you see here, that's the reason why I chose not to do it via subtraction, because I would have had to do 46 steps for that. Okay, um, already. So that's with the, with the, the, my idea to, to try to say, why do we need division? We, and why do we need multiplication for the computations where we're gonna do next? Okay, so I'm gonna introduce here very briefly the, the, the Tzolkin calendar, also called the sacred calendar that uses 13 numbers, Tresena from, from Trece and, and 20 names, the Veintena from Veinte. And the list you see on the left is the list of the gods. And what we are going to see on the right is like a, 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 a calendar that I put together all the, the, the names and the dates, which is very, very useful to do computations. So how do, does the calendar work? Like first, you know that it has 13 numbers with 20 God names. And the, the, the numbers 20 and 13 do not have common factors. Uh, except for one, but that doesn't count. So 20 and 13, that's why the calendar has a total of 260 dates. That's the reason why. And the way it works is that way. So we would have one imix, two ik, three akbal, four kan, and so on and so forth, gets here and continues up to the last uh, 13 and a half. So we have 260 already. And um, I will then show you here, or give you first two definitions and a, and a theorem. Um, I'm gonna define what, what it means uh, for two um, um, elements, A and B, or P and Q, or sorry, A and B to be, uh, uh, to be uh, uh, congruent. So we say that, that A and B integers are congruent, or we say, uh, um, if uh, the, 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 the difference between the two numbers is uh, a multiple of C, we say congruent uh, modulo C. Or if we divide by C both numbers, A and B divided by C, they get the same remainder when they are divided by C. So when that happens, uh, they are congruent. And a very simple example of congruency would be uh, uh, clock arithmetic. So that would be congruence modulo 12, the 12 hours. And in as an example would be 16 hours is equal to 4 p.m. 16 equals to 4 modulo 12. So if I take the difference of 
16 um, minus four, I get 12. So it's a multiple of, of 12. Or if you divide the, the, the numbers by 12, you get the same remainder. So that's the idea. Think about clock arithmetic, but in this case, I'm defining it in general modulo, modulo C. And why am I introducing this definition? Because all the computations I'm gonna do have to do with division. And all what division is, is just remainders. What we were seeing before in the two examples that I show you, remainders. But that's that's what what division is about, and I also need the definition of co primes. A and B are co primes, and I used it before with the example of thirteen and twenty, when they do not have common factors. And by that we don't include one. So thirteen and twenty are co primes, and then I'm going to use a modern uh, a, a theorem, which is obviously I'm not trying to say that the Maya used it, but I'm going to use it for to make it simpler. That's the only reason to explain, well, we need division. We need to find remainders quickly. And this theorem is gonna help us to find those remainders. So here we go. We say P and Q are co-primes, uh, assuming that they are co-prime, then the system of equations, Y equals A modulo P. Like the rim of think, think about clock arithmetic, but in this case is modulo P. Y is equal, same Y equals to B modulo Q. That would be a system for Y, and it has a unique solution for Y modulo PQ. Already, so that's what the, what, the, what the theorem is providing us. And not only that, it also gives us a solution. The, 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 it says unique solution here, but how does the solution look like? And it is the way it's depicted over here. So, but but in order for us, we will be given the A, we will be given the B, uh, S and K, uh, we'll find them and P and Q will also be given. So rather than looking at the formula, let me show you here the example, because it's gonna be easier. For the Solkin calendar, going back, we have P 13 for the Tresena, we have Q 20 for the Veintena, and in the, the, the the, for the two numbers, 13 and 20, like I said, they are co-primes, no common factors. When you want to write the, the KP plus SQ equals one, K will be negative three and S will be two. Why? Because negative three times, negative three times, uh, in this case, the, the, that, that would be, that goes with the Tresena, Negative, sorry, uh, yes, the tres, the, the tres sena would be negative 39, and two times the vein tena is 40. So then if I add the two numbers, 40 minus 39, I get one. So that's that, that so they fit the, the model that I need for my formula. So eventually I get a formula here. The, the Solkin day number that I, if I wanna find the Solkin day number, so that means if I wanna find the value of Y, I have a formula which will be a lot easier for us to use. And that is 40 times the Tresena number minus 39 times the Veintena number modulo 260. I am Y 260 because PQ, which is here in the formula there, PQ is 13 times 20. And, and, and the Tresena number, and the vein tena number, that's 13, that's 20. And why the 40? We got it here, SQ. Why the negative 39? We got it here. So it's easier than to just use the formula, forget, forget all the other part for the theorem. So example, if you want to find the Solkin day number corresponding to, to a random date, of course, you could just grab the calendar and start counting, but this would be would prove be, to be very, very simple. Um, let's take the number four Kawak, for example. And in this case, the Tresena uh, would be four. So I'm saying A is four. And the Veintena, uh, that would be the Kawak God. And I put the, the gods here. Kawak is the next to last. So that would be 19 because there's 20. So I get here then A is four, B is 19. And if I put it in the formula here, then I would get 
y, that would be my solution, four times 40, 40 times the Dresena, Dresena is four, minus 39 that I have over here and the vein 10 is 19. So I figure out what that number is and I get a negative number, negative 581, but we're working modulo 260. And we find that the number, um, the solution would be 199. And why? Think again, modulo 260. If I take this number and I subtract this one, remember A minus B, when I subtract this one, I'm really adding because it's a minus there, I get a number that is a multiple of 260. That's why I get 199. And 199 happens to be the, the 199th day of the sulking, just by using the simple formula. So that, and we can also uh, go backwards and I can say, okay, let's say that I do have the, the they tell me uh, the 234th day of the sulking. And then the question will be, what uh, sulking date corresponds to that? Then in that case, you would divide by 13, you would divide by 20, and you would find the answer as well. Okay, so we can use also this method to find the number of days between sulking dates. Like say, if I give you two random ones, and then for example, here, three can, three can and uh, seven kimi, uh, then we can use the same formula. So I copy it here and, and figure out what's the number of day between the two dates. Uh, so in this case, I, I need to find only the Tresena and the Veintena. But I have uh, for the, the numbers that I have are three and seven. But since I'm comparing a difference between the two, I need to take seven minus three, which is four. So the Tresena difference is four. And then the veintena, I look at Khan and, and Kimi. Khan is the fourth god. If you, if you look in here, that's where Khan is. And uh, Kimi is the sixth god here. So you take six minus four, you get two. So I have my Tresena here. It's going to be four. My veintena is going to be two. Do the computation and you get 82. So that would be... That what does that mean is that there are 82 days between the two dates. That that would be one one way uh, of using the formula as well. Already, so and now I'm going to introduce the half calendar because then we're going to put them together. And for the half calendar, we have 18 gods. We have 20 numbers, zero through 19, plus the five days of the month of the Yab. And in here you have the um, the calendar that I that I devised and and the arrow is pointing that way because they have calendar works in like more similar to our uh, Gregorian calendar in which the the numbers are all within the month and for example for the first month which is pop the numbers vary between 0 and 19. So go zero pop, one pop, two pop, and so on and so forth until 19. Then comes the god Uo, zero Uo. So that's what I was putting over here until you get say to 19 Kumku, then it starts the mini month of the Wayab that only varies from zero to four. And that would com combination would be then um, you have the 18 gods times 20, that would be 360 days, but then you have the five days of the Wayab, the mini month, so that adds up to 365 days for the half calendar, okay? So in, similarly, as we did with the, with the sulking that I gave the calendar, and then I said, let's figure out what the, what the sulking day number is, and vice versa, we can also do it with the half um, and figure out what's the half day number for a given date and vice versa. So, and there's a mini formula over here. So um, the, the half day number for the A God, so A God would be the date, the half date would be the God number. So figure out what the God number is. I have the list over here, minus one, and then multiply that times 20 and then add A plus one. A being the number. 
So as an example, let's find the half day number for eight kumku. So here A is eight and kumku, kumku is the next to the last, the next to the last. So kumku is the 18th month. So if I plug in the numbers in the formula, I get God number minus one. So I get 17, 18 minus one times 20 there and plus eight plus one. But since A is eight plus one, I get nine. So that gives me the 349th day of the half calendar. This is very, very quick. Of course, you can grab the calendar, start counting as well. That would be an, another, another way. And vice versa, if you, if I give you a half date, say 232, and I ask you, well, what would be the corresponding half date to that number? All we have to do is we use the formula backwards. So I rewrite, I decompose here the number 232 and I wrote it. So you see it exactly like the formula. 12 minus one times 20 plus 11 plus one. So you can clearly see the God number is 12, all right? Which corresponds to se here, that, uh, and then 11 plus one. So A is 11, A being 11. But that doesn't mean it's the 11th day because remember that the days began with zero. So then, then the, it is really the 12th day but then we write A11 being the 12th day. So it's 11 say that would be the, the answer for that. So we can go also back and forth with the, with the number of day with the date and the date and number of days. Now we're gonna we're gonna merge both calendars into one and uh and, and into a superior cycle known as the round calendar which you can see here, and, and my thanks, um, many of the pictures you see here uh, were provided by Carl Calloway, um, who graciously uh, helped me with many of the depictions. So my thanks to, to you, Carl. Um, and I really like this depiction of the uh, merging of the calendars because it not only has the Soul King, which is actually Soul King, the 20 gods of the Soul King, uh, uh, sorry, 20 sulking gods, not 20, 20 gods here, uh, has the 13 numbers within here. So all this part corresponds to the sulking calendar. And by the way, this is a Western depiction. And then we have the 365 half dates here. So the long, uh, the round calendar date here is three, and this is the Etznab uh, god, three Etznab and six small that would correspond. And I say that I like the, the, the drawing because it also has the Lords of the Night, which they don't make the, any, any um, they don't uh, uh, take any part in the computation of the number of days, but, it, but I like it because every single round calendar date is associated to a Lord of the Night, like as we will see um, very soon. Okay, um, so the round calendar um, uh, has 18,980 days, which corresponds to 52 uh, uh, half years. And I'm writing, rewriting here the numbers. Why does the round calendar has that many days? It's because if we decompose 260, we get this decomposition, we decompose 365, we get this decomposition. And then to figure out the number of days, I need to find the least common multiple between the two numbers. And there's the numbers, if we put them together, notice that they have a common five. This five it will turn to be really important later on as well. Now it's making a big impact in the number of days. So notice that we put, when I multiply the two numbers, I put the number five once, not twice, just once. So that would make it like the least common multiple between the two decompositions. And it gives us the answer of 18,980 and not the product of 260 and 365. So that's why, that's because they have a, a common factor. What, what is that telling us is that every, 18,980 days, one of the 260 sulking days will coincide with the, one of the 
uh, 365 days of the HAP. And written in a different way, it would be 73 sulking years, 73 times 260, or 52 HAP years, which we have there. Okay. And I mentioned the number five is extremely uh, uh, important, the factor. And that's the greatest um, common denominator here uh, between the two, which saying not all the possible combinations. You can just cannot just put a sulking date randomly and a half date randomly, put them together. They are not always a part of the round calendar. So I'm going to work on devising a method, which are the possible combinations. Keeping in mind that the mythical Maya beginning is for a how a kumku. So that will be our, our starting point, let's say the, our zero date. Um, if we use the method I showed you before for the calculating the day in the calendar, for a how is the 160th day in the Sulkin calendar. And a kumku is the 349th day in the HAP calendar. All right. Turns out that, uh, because again, remember, for a how is a Solkin date, a kumku is a half date. We put them together for the round calendar. And turns out that when, when I compute the number of days and I do the difference, 349 minus 160, I get, in this case, 189. But if I work module of five, five because of the five I highlighted here, I get four. And that will happen every single time. It's a possible combination, possible combination between Solkin and half. And I figure out the day number in the Solkin, day number in the half, and I do the subtraction modulo five, I will always get uh, four all the time. And um, so I highlighted the formula here, the half date number, which I show you how to compute minus uh, the sulking date number will always be equal because that's going to be a number that will be congruent to four modulo fives. So what does that mean? That if I take the number here, okay, and I divide by five, I get the same remainder that I get when I uh, do the four. Or I think it would be easier if I say simply take the number on the left, subtract four. Subtract four, that's going to be a multiple of five. That would be another way of looking at the, at the modulo, modulo five. Okay, so then I devise this table, which the table will, will really tell you what are the, all the possible round calendar combinations, all the possibles, and there's no more, no less. And I will explain this table using the imix e god and then it then we'll multiply times 20 for the number that we're going to be getting for imix e okay so this this is uh, i remind you this is a sulking uh, god and as being a sulking god then it has 13 numbers attached so there's 13 possible imix e uh combinations so i say here every sulking date and imix e um, uh, n varying between 1 and 13 are the possible one. And I wrote here, it's associated to the 4y update. Why? Because these are the possible numbers for uh, combinations of number and have God, number and have God, and so on. Only four that are associated to imix. But remember that y up goes between 0 and 4. So I cannot have a nine wire, 14 wire and so on. So the only possible wire combination that I have associated to emix would be four wire. But I have 13 possible emix. So 13 possible emix associated to four wire, that, that would be 14 dates. We're gonna keep that already. So then, oh, but, but also remember there's, 18 other gods besides Wayab over here. So there's 18 other gods that can be with, go with four and emix, 18 other gods that go with nine and emix and so on. That's why I wrote here, the 13 is for the 13 sulking gods, 
The 18 is for the 18 God possible here, and we have four instances, four of them. So the product gives me 936 dates, possible dates involving Emix and I have God. But wait, we are forgetting the, the YAP combination. There were 13, so I need to add 936 plus 13, and I get 400. Uh, sorry, 949 round calendar dates involving Emix. All the, there's no more than that. But that's one of the 20 gods. So if I multiply 949 times 20, and I get my total number of round calendar dates. So this is really uh, 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 showing that, that the table works and it's giving you the right numbers and the, the right possible combination. Now I use the table a lot because sometimes I, I need to do computations, need examples, and I quickly need to figure out dates of the round calendar. And this tells me because sometimes if something is not working, I immediately go to the table and it's a date that, that was not possible. And I explain, I say, for example, seven emics and then 10 uh, 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 go, uh, and, uh, a god that is hub which is not possible because I don't have a 10 in this case already. So we have that. And then I'll go into the long count dates because we're gonna make the connections between the round calendar dates, the possible one, and then the long count dates. And they use the long, the long count dates to mark events over huge long periods of time. And the shortest period was the kin, the day, which is, the, the word, the Maya word for day. Then 20 kings was one winnow. Uh, 360 kings was one tune. 7,200 kings, one katun. And 144 southern kings, one baktun. And this is probably looking familiar to you when we were doing the chronological uh, way of writing the numbers. Remember, the first one we left as it is, that would be for the kings. Then we multiply 20, then 360 and so on. So it's the exact same that if we write it uh, like in like in the, the using our Arabic numbers, we were doing the exact same computation. Today's date, uh, January 9th, 2023 is in the round calendar, 9241 which in, in long count date, and I'll show you later how to do the conversion. If you have one, how to get into this one and vice versa. That corresponds into long count date to 13, zero, 10, three, 11. So what does that mean? It means that there are 11 days, 11 kings, three winnows, so three times 20, 10, uh, um, uh, uh, tunes, so 10 times 360, no cartoons and 13 back tunes. So if you multiply all that, it will give you a huge number. And it will be a number representing the number of days since the beginning of the Maya era. So that's that's what 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 why that that would be representing. And it's connected again, like I said, there's a round calendar date here connected to a long count date. Okay, so we're gonna be using both. Uh, and we're gonna do, like I said before, a conversion. First a conversion from long count date, so that the sequence of the five numbers into uh, the round calendar date. So he says, say that I give you a random one and say, what would be corresponding Sol King hub combination that I uh, have for this particular for this particular date? So I'm gonna use a notation here for the round calendar date, T for the Tresena, and that immediately relates to Sol King. Then um, uh, V for Veintena, Sol King, and H would be, for, uh, that's for, for hub, but it will be the hub day number instead of writing the, the number of the hub and the god of the hub. It will be the day number, which we know how to compute. So then as an example for four ahau, eight kumku, which is a round calendar date, T would be four, that's the trecena. Ahau, remember ahau was the 18, uh, uh, sorry, the, the last month, 
in the veintena, so would be 20. And then eight kumku, which we did the computation, I show it to you. What is the corresponding day number in the half calendar? We did it and it was 349. So I have this four sequence, four, 20, 349, which I'm gonna be using in the formula. Because remember, we wanna convert into long count date. So what is the uh, round calendar day number? number in this in this uh, first, in this case, uh, the first question. What is the round calendar day number for a given long calendar date, which is N5 and four and three and, and two and one in general, considering that day zero, uh, day zero is for a Hawaii Kumku, or as I wrote it before, 42349, okay? And the other uh, question that I mentioned before, we'll see it later. So in this case, round calendar day number corresponding to a, a, a given long calendar day. Okay, so in general, when you have the, the sequence N5 and four and three and two and one, and you wanna convert into number of days, like I show in the previous slide, uh, for the Bactoons, it's one Bactoon would be 144,000, but we have N5 of them, so we multiply plus, one cartoon, every cartoon 7,200. I, I have an, an four of them, so I multiply. Uh, then the tunes, each tune is 360. I have an three of them, multiply. And then winnels, I have 20 days in each one, so I multiply plus and one. So that big total number is representing the number of days in the in the long count, in the long count date. So I'm gonna rewrite this, remember for T, which is the trecena, I need to know for all these number of days, how would, can I connect that number into the trecena, which means modulo 13. So I rewrote the, I wrote the number here, I'm adding the T zero, which in our case is gonna be four plus, and I added the computation that I did above except that now all the coefficients that I have over here, 144, south and 7,200, 360, 20, and one is not needed, I need to convert them modulo 13. So I need to rewrite it as a number in such a way that when I subtract the number that I write below, I get a multiple of 13. All about remind remainders, like I said. So 144, south and is congruent to negative one. That's why you see negative and five. Then 7,200 doing the computation modulo, I get negative two. For 360, I get negative four. And then for 20, I get seven, and this one stays the same. So for 20, I, I could explain why 20, we write seven, because if I subtract 20 minus seven, I get 13, which is a multiple of 13. So I rewrote the trecena in a very, very simple way compared to the original one. And I do the same with the veintena here, with the veintena uh, modulo 20, and it reduced to very, very, just two terms, because it turns out that all these numbers that I'm circling over here, they are all multiples of 20. So when you do computations modulo 20, multiples of 20, you get zero. And that's why I get V0 plus N1, V0 being the uh, 20. And similarly, I do H for the, uh, um, the half day number. And I did a similar work. So formula that we have, this is gonna be a, a general formula now for the, that will give you the trecena, the veintena, and the half day number given any uh, long count date. You just plug in the numbers, do the computations, module of the number you, you have, and then you have your answer. So that's that's uh, what what I give you here, and the way we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna illustrate the the example is by using this Leiden plaque. Uh, it's a beautiful beautiful 
uh, example, I say because of we have all the information, we have the long count date, we have the sulking, we have the have, and we also have the Lord of the Night in, in the depiction. So in this case, uh, there's a drawing there on the side. The long count date uh, is 8 14 uh, 3 1 12. So you can see the numbers here. This is 8. We have 14, we have three, we have one, and we have 12. So I enclose that. So what do we, we would, we would like to do that now is given that long count date, we would like to find then the trecena, use the formula that I gave you before. So we want to find the trecena, we want to find the veintena, and we want to find the half number. So it's going to give us that information is going to give us also the round calendar date, okay? So that's with the computation over here. So I'm using the long count date, and, and I highlighted here the formula. So N5 is 8, N4, 14, N3 is 3, N2 is 1, and N1 is 12. So I put all the numbers here. And I do my computations. And in, let's say, for example, for T here, in this one here, I plug in the numbers. And remember, uh, uh, I have N5, which is eight. So I put that the number here, 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 and here. And I get negative 25, which is a negative number. I want to figure out the negative 25 is equal to what number modulo 13? And it would be equal to one because if I subtract one minus this number, which is negative 25, I'm adding one and 25. So I get 26, which is twice 13. So it is a multiple of 13. So instead of using negative 25, I use one, which is good because that it will be my trecena. Trecena is one. Veintena, similar work, modulo, I get 32, but modulo 20 now, because I'm doing veintena, I get 12. Again, I subtract 32 minus 12 and I get 20. So I get 12 for my veintena. So that means for my God, uh, 20, uh, sorry, 12, 12. And if you look here on the, on the list, that would be the god Eb. That would be the one over here. That's 12. So we have the sulking date, which is one Eb. And then H will give us the have day number. And replacing all, we get 121. So that is the 121 day in the have calendar. What would be then the have date? Remember? then I can divide by 20, and then I get I get six, six times 20, 120 plus one already. But so that would mean six months and one day. And that means it's in the seventh month because it's six months and one day and the first day of the seventh month. And here I have the have, um, uh, I have the, the, the have list, and so I need to find here the seventh month, and the seventh month is uh, Jack's skin, and it says the first day of the seventh month. But careful, the first day is zero. So I get zero Jack's skin for the, for the have, and I have my round calendar date here. And then I have the Tresena, Veintena, and the, the have day number as well. So that's a way of using the formula and going into then long count date, into round calendar date as well, okay? So if we are looking at the um, here, the answer we got one, and this is the God Eb, and here we have zero Yakskin, okay? So question would be, then what is that, uh, this glyph doing in between? And, and that is something that, that Many times my students would ask, well, what, 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 what is that? Um, and turns out that that is the God of Lord of the Night. So that's why I, I included that in here. Um, in, in, the, in that case, and I show you over here, it's five. So there, there actually there are 
nine lords of the night, which are the nine deities of the underworld or the Shivalba with nine levels. Uh, the names of the lords of the night are not known. That's why they're labeled G1 through G9. We can always compute the Lord of the night given the long count date and five and four and three, oh, sorry, uh, and three and two and one, we can always do it. But except that we can, we the, uh, the formula that I'm, I'm showing you over here, the formula to find it given the, the long count date for that, for, to use the formula, you only need N1 and N2. Why is that we don't need N3 and four and N5? It's because those three numbers are always, always multiples of nine. And by being multiples of nine and we're doing a computation modulo nine, then we get zeros. So it doesn't really make any difference. So we compute the Lord of the night by doing 20 and two plus and one. And in the case of the Leiden plaque, uh, we N2 was one. And N2, remember, uh, we have 12, then one. So N1 is 12 and two is one, and we get 32. So question, 32 is equal to what number modulo nine? Well, it's equal to five, because if I take 32 minus five, I get 27. 27 is a multiple of nine. So I get the, 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 um, the G5 as the corresponding uh, Lord of the night for the light and plaque. And that explains the, the one we have over there. And a note here um, that is, the Lord of the Night depends on the long count date, not on the round calendar date. And I explain, you can have, you can have, uh, let's say one round calendar date associated to several long count date. That means if you keep adding the 18,980 or up, about 52 years. And I give you an example here. So for a Hawaii Kumku associated to this long count date, the Lord of the Night is G8 if you do the computation here using the formula above. Another for a Hawaii Kumku, same round calendar date, but I'm using this long count date, which is associated to it, Lord of the Night is G7 if you do the computation. Okay, and if you want more information, I'm using here uh, the Maya Exploration Center uh, calendar uh, converter, and you can see there the long count date um, in, in both cases, 0 to 12, 13, 0. And you can see here the Gregorian date, and you have you can see for how a Kumquan in the other one as well. So careful when computing the Lord of the Night, you got to go into the, the, the round calendar and not the, I'm sorry, you have to go into the long count date and not the round calendar date. Okay. Um, and here I have a, um, this is uh, from uh, the book of um, Michael Cohen and uh, Van Stone, uh, which in which they do a conversion from a number a long count uh, date into the Julian calendar that I have the details over here. Um, I would ask um, Jim, do I have time to do this? Uh, yeah, if you can do it in a few minutes, sure. Because I have more stuff and perhaps I could move into the next. Uh, all right, so we're about what? We're already one. One, uh, oh, 25. Hour, 20 minutes into it. Maybe go into the next. Uh, yeah, because segment. right, and and also if they look at the PDF, the Aslander, this have has all the details in there. All right. Okay. All right. So moving on, I given two round calendar days. Question would be, what would be the number of days between the two round calendar dates? And and remember, every time I refer up to a round calendar day, I give three numbers, which is the trecena, the veintena, and then the, the, the day number in the half calendar. So in that case, there is a formula here, 
And actually formula also given in Lounsbury uh, article, but he gave the formula without a proof. And he wrote there uh, that he won't uh, uh, prove the formula, which is uh, 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 trifle lengthy. And I, I do have the proof in case anybody's interested. I, I have the proof of the formula, which is very useful to do this. It, all you have to do is have the, the Tresena Veintena, the half day number for the two dates, plug it in, do the deltas, which are the difference, and then you get you get the, um, the answer. And the only thing, well, you're working model of this huge number because we're doing uh, working in that big number, big number of days. So I'll show you. And um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you here how to use the computations with this a portrait of a royal Maya family. I really, really like this example. It's talking about Lady Katuna Howe and specifically her daughter, Lady Huntan Ak, and it gives you the long count date, which is the, the date, long count date here, when the Lady Katuna Howe was born. And then it gives you another date, which gives it to you uh, in here. Um, in round calendar date and not in long count date, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cheat first, use the long count date, do the computation, but then I'll show you how could we go from one to the other. And this is the date when in, in which she gave birth to, to her daughter. So the question could be how old was Lady Katuna, how when her daughter was born? Okay, so, um, and I said here that we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that at, at that later. Um, so here is a drawing of the um, uh, Stella that we have there, and I'm showing you first. I highlighted the long count date nine twelve. So we have the nine, we have twelve two zero and sixteen. And then, as I said, the other date, which is when the when when she gave birth, is given in the story depicted in the in the Stella here in round calendar form. So we here we have because remember you're reading in col in columns of two, left to right, left to right. So we read here, here, and then you end up with four Kimi, and then this one over here should be uh, then fourteen U. And then the, the story continues. So we wanna know then how old was Lady Katuna, how when her daughter was born, but I have two long count dates. So I'm simply going to take the two long count dates and I'm gonna subtract. So nine minus nine, I'm here, 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 and I get a negative, but then I'm gonna convert that, which is actually a distance number. I'm gonna convert it to number of days, to number of kins. By doing the multiplication, I keep these, this times 20, this times 360, 7,200. And I get 12 south and 310 days. So that means that she was that many days old when her daughter was born, but we never say our age in number of days. So let's divide by our uh, 365.2425 to figure out that it's approximately 33.7 years. So that means she was mother at age 33. So that would be just simply using long count dates. But what if you do not have the, the long count dates? So two alternatives would be, uh, if, they, if they give you only the, the round calendar dates, then you would have to devise a method to work with the round calendar dates as opposed to the long count dates or use a method to convert the round calendar dates into long count dates and do the computation that way, okay? So what I, what I provided with the, with the formula that I presented before is a method to do it directly. Because remember, it works with the Tresena, it works with the Veintena and the half number, which we have here. Tresena, then see what's the, 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 the God, and then we figure out what that, so you can put all the information here, and then we do the computation, and we get the exact same answer. We get the 12,310 model of that, that, that number already. So either way, but, if, but, if, but again, as I said, if you 
only have the round calendar dates or you convert into the uh, long count date or you do, you do it using that formula would be very, very quick. And here I have one more slide, which is referring to the, the wheel, the cartoon wheel. And um, so every chronological key uh, period uh, ends on, on, on an how, like specifically the cartoons end on an how. Why? And that's because the first ones ended in an how. So the 13 cartoon wheel over here counts records the cartoon by the number of the day a how in which the previous cartoon ended. And I highlighted here can a how, which would be for a how. The next one here would be ka a how, which is to a how. So after for a how, then the next cartoon should be, should be then associated to to a how. And so the cartoon, the cartoons end in for a how, like I said, to a how, which is actually listing the, the, the dates that we have over here. And I explain why. If we have, say, start with for a how, and I add one cartoon, one cartoon is 7,200 days. So it would be for a how plus 7,200. But 7,200, I need to add to a, a sulking date. So I need the, uh, Tresena and Veintena. So I'm going to convert 7,200 modulo 13, which is actually 11. So 11 would be the Tresena. And uh, the Veintena would be actually zero because 7,200 happens to be a multiple of 20. So what do I do with the for, for a how, which is kind of how I add 11, 11 for the Tresena, I got corresponding to 7,200 and no gods because it's zero gods. So I get 15 a how, but wait, 15 a how is not possible because we only have up to 13. And then 13 is two, two a how. So 15 is two. Sorry, 15 is two, which is ka how, which is the next one. And similarly, you can find all the other, the other cartoons uh, ends uh, in the wheel. And why are, are only 13? Because there's 13 numbers attached to a how, which, which are in the, in the sulking date. And so here I'm writing as an example, two ends of cartoon. Um, 13, zero, 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 zero. That would be the end of the cartoon, which is actually the, the, the uh, that occur on four a how three can kin. And then that is associated to can a how, can for four. And for the next cartoon, that would be 13, one, zero, zero, zero. The end of the next cartoon will occur because that's gonna happen in the future in two a how and three chen. So after this, then we have the two a how. And if I compute the following one, it will end in looking in here and in 13 a how and so on. And similarly, you can do some computation like that uh, related to the tunes. Like I said, uh, chronological key periods are ending in, 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 in a house. So uh, Jim, that would really, end the presentation. I have uh, that explanation for tunes. And then I have my references here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am open for questions. All right. Well, that was great, Imana. Thank you. Thank you. We, we have started to lose some of our audience as it got more complicated with the modulars, <laughs> I think. Uh, but we have a uh, one question that Carl Calloway also uh, answered. <clears throat> but Christopher uh, Baltas was asking, when did Westerners come to understand the Maya numeration system? When did West the Maya numeration? Oh, Westerners. Now Carl yes. Calloway said. It was discovered in small mathematical steps. First was bars and dots. And yeah. see Michael Coe's breaking the Maya code. 
Okay, I, I do not have, I, I for, for, from what I have for uh, dates, it's, I think it was 500, circa 500 uh, um, BCE for, for, the, for the numbers, the bars and dot. That's the data that I have. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds good. But but that would be not really answering the question because that wouldn't be for the Westerners. That would be for when it was uh, uh, probably discovered or, or used first. Right. Yeah. So I'm not saying the Westerners, which actually that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, uh, Jim, I can, I can speak to that a little bit. Excellent. Right. Uh, yeah, just, just really quickly. Thank well, you. you know, you, you basically had uh, several very wise uh, um, uh, Franciscans, uh, priests who actually learned the Maya enumeration system and would debate uh, passage, passage, point on point uh, with Maya priests. Uh, you know, during the, the, the uh, shortly after contact. So, um, but then all that knowledge was lost and it wasn't until the 19th century um, uh, that when Maya cities began to be um, rediscovered, uh -huh. uh, was, was there an interest in Maya mathematics and the Maya calendar again? So the very first person I think was Raffinesque and he, he noted the, um, uh, a French scholar, and he noted the uh, the bars and dots, and oh. and uh, that began the 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 insights into the uh, elements of the counting system. And then it quickly, to use the metaphor, it quickly multiplied. And uh, by the by about 1900, uh, people like Lounsbury and and uh, uh, not yeah, yeah uh, not Floyd Lounsbury. Um, um, Fort Firstman um, and and others had pretty much worked out the mechanics of the uh, of of Maya mathematics, uh -huh. and then were applying to, to the inscriptions as well as the the um, uh, the Dresden Codex. Uh, and then by about 1920, uh, Morley and Thompson and others had pretty much figured out. Uh, the full system of, of the calendar there, but there's a there's a lot of parts in between that are really really interesting, and we're still in the process of discovering new calendars. And, and right, and it, it's it, not I, fully, yeah. I think it's fascinating all of it because because every time I I looking in the media, there's always something new. There's a new article, a new book, and there's more and more and more information because uh, and they, as they are discovering now using the LIDAR method, they're discovering more cities. There's going to be more information there as well. It's oh, yeah, 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 which, which is really extraordinary. But I, I, I'm dying to ask a question. I'm actually dying to ask a question. Um, and my, my question is, I don't know if you can allow me to put something up on the screen. Sure, what, what yes. I really, what I really like is when you go in to the guts uh, of the mechanics of the calendar and you're able to show how uh, the relationship between uh, day names and numerals and, and the restrictions, uh, there are the, the, the pairing of numbers and days and months there there are there's parameters there's restrictions you just can't put like you said yeah. any number in front of uh, a day name and whatnot and exactly. if i can share something here i want to i want to show sure. you that, so, that is just Mena, you may have to stop sharing your i'm going to stop sharing here hold on yeah because this is here. one of the problems that we need help with which uh, again could uncover a whole new calendar system and account okay so that this Great. is why i'm so okay can you see that yes a li yes a little okay. yeah okay can you see that okay yes okay so these are i'll, I'll scroll down here these are the takao bones um from burial 116 and um embedded in these bones are various calendar counts 
uh, oh. various almanacs that we're just rediscovering. One of those, Barbara McLeod and others have done some great work on called the 311 peak count. Okay, now, but this one is so interesting because if you look over here to the left, yeah. okay, we have a bone. This is um, um, M29 and uh, miscellaneous text 29 and miscellaneous text 30. And you can see that there's two columns of text here. And yeah. what it talks about is the life and the death of the number three. And the number three is this God of flower and song. And you can see him here, down here in the very bottom of the bone here. Okay. Um, and he has, this, he has the, the flower up on his forehead and he has the big eek symbol uh, yeah. in his ear. But you can see here, we have an opening date of four con, okay? Yes. Uh, and the ob is not, the ob date is not given. Uh, 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 the, it's a very obscure date hmm. uh, or an, um, an obscure expression of the ob. So we have to find out, well, what is the ob date? But what we know is that this is uh, a death date and uh, so we have the death and the immolation of the number three. So this is a god, Ooh. the number three. He dies, and he's also immolated. He's he's burnt up, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, and other things that are happening uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, the oversight of a hummingbird god. Okay, so that's all. That's all just the, the mythos behind it. But if we can figure out this this opening ob in yeah. connection with the other ob because you can see we have four con yeah further so down, we have five con and then we have six con do you see so mm -hmm. so there's a there's a numerological sequence mm -hmm. yes involving the number three because we have four con five um, con and six see. con now the the latter the, so we have three calendar rounds here. The first one is <laughs> is unknown because we don't know the ob, but the other two we do. It's it's uh, 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 they're, they're noted quite clearly. So what we need here from you, what we okay. need here from you, <laughs> is what on that opening calendar round date. What what are the what's the restriction between these three dates? Three, these three calendar down, what is the parameters of what that opening hob date could be? Yeah, okay. And this okay. is something I would really like to talk to you about because once we get those parameters down, I can guarantee you that there is a, there is a numerological level here between the four con, five con, uh, and the six con that deals with a factor of three because we're talking about the yeah. God of three. Yeah. And the life okay. and death of the God of three. So they're gonna incorporate here, a divisor here that's gonna incorporate, it's gonna be like three times 360 or it's gonna be yeah. nine times 360. Yeah. But what we have to find is that first opening calendar round. Okay. And we were able to crack open this mythos Oh. Because the mythos will have a, a, a mathematical index that is related to the numerology of the number three. Do you see? This is fascinating. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's really exciting. It's really I, so that's why, that's why I, and I have many other accounts on the Tikal bones that are related to almanacs and counts that are yeah. mythical and numerological, but we don't know the mathematics behind it. So at a later date, I'll I'll discuss these with you. And yes. maybe you can give us the parameters, which will then mm. give us the answer, which will then open up uh, the, the, the numerological sequence of the date. <laughs> wow. I, I, yeah. I la yeah. like the problem. I like it. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a challenge. That's it. That's it. So, so we wow. have more to talk about. That's why I'm so excited about your talk. <laughs> so what what about the the bone on the right you didn't say anything about it is there anything oh i got oh we have more shimina but i, I don't oh, want to okay okay oh, I, I can i can show you really quickly uh it's just so i mean it's all mathematics and it's all numerology 
So let me, um, oh. by the way here, <laughs> uh, you know, for those of you, th this is showing uh, 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 where, right. where, where writing is emerging from, but it's really showing where mathematics is emerging from because this hand merges out of the underworld, out oh. of the, uh, out of the, the, the wuk chapat, the white bone centipede. And this is the white bone centipede that the, that the, that the sun wears when he's at nadir point in the underworld. So mathematics are, and computation is writing out of the, is, is, is arising out of the mind and the patronage of the sun god. Um, so let, let me just go here. I'll show you one more here. Of course, these are the 311 peak dates, uh, but th that has to be discussed at a later date. Okay. Uh, but here's, here's, a, here's another really great one here. See, we have these, there's miscellaneous text number 27. We have three dates for a how. Okay. Uh, four, uh, uh, I think it's four Ben and, and five Ben. So four how eight kum ku, that this is your base yeah. date. Mm -hmm. And then we count forward to four Ben, five Ben. And you're already queued in right away, right? Oh. We have a contrived multiple between these dates. Okay. Uh, and it's discussing an almanac that we don't know about. And Michael Grove has recently hypothesized that this span of time is 52 tunes plus 13 days, with 13 days acting as sort of a leap day correction. But we don't know. We, we, we really mm. need to understand. Again, this is an almanac that the Maya yeah. used. The base date is for how a kumku. And, the, uh, and, and, it's, it, and, and of course, the key steps are related to Ben. It's most likely four bin, five bin, six bin, seven bin, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but, so this is another bone that we need your help with. What okay. are the parameters <laughs> of, of such a count? And how do those parameters, do those re parameters, do they relate to godly cycles or do they relate to planetary or, or stellar cycles? Do you see? Okay. Wow. It's just, it's not, yeah, yeah. So 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 that's that that that's where I'll stop. But this is the this is the next horizon that we can apply all this spade work that you've done to new almanacs and new counts and just open it right up. Wow! It's hey, Carl, can I ask a question? Sure. You mentioned the the white centipede of the underworld, which is the sun at its mm -hmm. later point in the right. underworld travels. Right. right. So, Jimena, this might be what we were looking for concerning a zero date. Okay. Like for how he come coup, the day before has to be counted. The day of has to be counted. So there is no zero, 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 except way back in the beginning. But with the sun in the underworld, would that be where the zero is? Ah, Jim, you've just opened up a can of worms. Yeah. Boy, a, a can of centipedes, Jim. You just opened up <laughs> yeah. a can of centipedes. Yes, 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 yes. That, <laughs> that was, I have to address directly. Uh, and this is the next in, in, my, in my thesis. At what point does the sulking hmm. and the ob begin? And right. this is a really, 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 really exciting part <laughs> because of, of Maya calendrics that we're just going to understand because what uh, um, uh, Peter Matthews noticed in the Yashchilan inscriptions that the Maya spoke of dates in which it looks like they have a notation that speaks to um, when the Hob begins and the sulking begins, and there's a there's a gap between the two. One may begin at midnight, while the other one may begin at sunrise, oh, yeah. or vice versa. Yeah. So we have notation in the inscriptions that talk about the start times and the beginning times of the sulking and the hob, and they actually start and begin at different times. 
Oh. Okay, so there's this overlap of 12 or 36 hours in which they're not in sync. Mm -hmm. so, 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 and there's, and, and, and again, it's a very complex argument, but when does the day begin is yeah. a really, really great question. And, and that itself, you look at all of the uh, uh, inscriptions connected with that. And, and uh, again, we might, we need mathematics to tell us uh, which one of these scenarios is correct. So that's another horizon. So the Maya have noto notation in the long count that tells you what time it is within a 24 hour period. Okay. But, but we just, there's just, you know, there's too many possibilities. It might be, uh, you, you know, and that's another riddle that has to be worked out. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I'm no, so I know. Excited. I'm so excited. I know I'm talking a lot about, it. so I, l allow some other, uh, some other questions, please. But yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just delighted that you've done this. <laughs> like, yeah, like I said, every time I, I look at my presentation, then I, then I have more questions and more questions says, okay, what do I do with this? And then I figure out for, for example, for the Lord of the night, I was, I was running into an error because I was computing the Lord of the night given the round calendar date and not the, the long count date and it was not matching the, the right. for the particular one and i i did it over and over until yes, i realized yes, yes, yes. and you just hit upon another and that's called the <laughs> errant lord, that's called the errant lords of the night and they're specifically introducing an error into the lord of night count because mm. they need to fudge the numbers and that when they fudge the numbers or the mechanics, that's just as interesting as when they calculate, you know, the correct Lord of the Night, right? Right, because that's why I gave the examples. That's so right. Have... Some of the errors in Maya uh, um, computations are so obvious, we all know that it's an error, but they want it to be there. They want that errant Lord of the Night because for different reasons. Mm. It might be mythological. It might be numerological. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the other realm is that there are errors that everybody knows they're errors. There's no way that they could have gotten, yeah, couldn't could have gotten the mathematics wrong. But yet they need it there for other reasons. Yeah. No, it's there's a lot, a lot, a lot of questions. Questions, more questions. Like I said, the more I look at this, the more questions I have. It's never ending. I'm never going to stop. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> there, there's another um, yeah, message. From Irv. <clears throat> He's commenting uh, a 13-day adjustment every 52 years would align the calendar with the seasons. A seasonal calendar? Yeah, quite possibly. Quite possibly. Um, that's a really good suggestion. And again, it's just so exciting to see all these other almanacs. And you know that they had weather almanacs and you know they had divination yes. almanacs. You know that yes. they had all these other, all these other <laughs> counting plays. And of course, these bones were being used by Hasao Chan Kawil for his own divination. He was a scribe extraordinaire. And of course, the the uh, the, uh, the one of the most remarkable, absolutely remarkable counts is the 311 peak count, uh, which could, which as Barb McLeod and Michael Grove uh, have, have recognized could relate to a processional almanac. And of oh. course it gets all the archeo astronomers all really hyped up and <laughs> excited. Yes, it can be, no, it can't be, but, um, yeah, but that all has to be debated at a later date. So, and of course, precession is the wobble of the Earth's axis and the drift of the background stars. And we know because my calculations are so accurate that they were aware of precessional drift. Oh yeah. Because within two to three generations of, of, uh, of tabulations, they would have seen that this uh -huh. fixed star there is a delay. 
uh, because every 72 years, basically 73 years is mm -hmm. one degree of precessional drift. Right. That's not a long time. So within three generations, they would have noticed yeah. that things are out of whack, things are out of sync. So we have a potentially the almanac for, for uh, that, that is reflecting precessional drift. Right. And it's a uh, lot of, yeah. I was gonna say, Marion Popano Hatch has detected that in the archeological record at Takalika Bak. Yeah, I mean, it's just processional drift is nothing complex. It means that, you know, uh, you, you, you uh, let's say that your father was, was born when this star, you know, rose directly in this window at this temple and you'd come back, you know, family would come back and commemorate that birth every year. Well, guess what? After 73 years, mm, there'd be a bit of a delay there. And then yeah. when, she, when your son would come back and, 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 uh, Come back to commemorate that rising of that fixed star. Oh my gosh. Where and, is and it? <laughs> where is it? It's not showing up on the horizon. So within two generations, you already know that drift is there. Yeah. Okay. And and because the Maya were so accurate in in their in their calculus, we know that they were aware of processional drift. The question is, how did they track it and how did they compensate for it? Just like we know that they were completely aware of um of uh, uh, of of the true you know tropical year they the the, the, mm -hmm. the leap day and they yes. had a very simple formula they used to 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 correct the leap day but but uh, things of this nature so um, yeah but if proven true uh, if this three eleven peak calendar is proven true the Maya will be one of the few civilizations that noted processional drift. They didn't know what caused it, but they noted the drift. Yeah. And I think it's yes. only the Greeks and the Chinese. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Processional drift. It I, I don't, like, I, I have to look historically. It sounds like you've been hanging out with Michael Grove. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I've been, I, I just been looking at the data. Yeah. I've been looking at the data. And it's really exciting because we have it there on the Takao Bones as well. All these almanacs, but we need Good, a good mathematician like yourself to get into the guts of this thing and tell us the parameters. <laughs> Fascinating. Right. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Dirk has a question. For which of the algorithms as in multiplication, division, and computations presented here, do we actually have historical evidence? And I mean, the bones of Tikal, I guess, are, are some evidence, but yeah, I, I would say that the, that they did multiplication, certainly, uh, they did division, certainly, but how they did it, I, we don't know. Only like what what um, the Landa wrote, like say, oh, they were doing the computations five by and five and five, twenties and twenties, hundreds and hundreds, and then they were using something uh, on the ground or something flat, but but um, he doesn't explain because he couldn't understand. Hmm. So we, we, we don't know. That's why I thought that the grid, like for what Calderon explained in 1968, I think that was, it's a close and very simple way of multiplying and you can multiply any number. It's not like limiting, like like when you say, I'm going to multiply by doing repeated addition. That is not possible with, with certain numbers because it would take forever to do it. And this method is very, very simple. And division, and there are some other methods that are very similar to the one I presented for Calderon. And then for division, I've seen uh, some very complicated one. And the one I presented is just that I did it by using the way you, I used to divide in decimal form with Arabic numbers. Let's do it vigesimal. That's it. That's all you saw there. Hmm. Uh, one comment that Gail Hansen made before she had to leave was uh, she's looking forward to continuing to learn I can see how talented Jimena is. 
And what strikes me is the beauty of the numbers and the incredible minds that created this system and the precision. It's perfection. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Michael Parker West was wondering if, when we were talking about the Westerners and when they became aware of it, uh, if Westerners, in quotes, knew about it in the 1500s, then deliberately and systematically destroyed that cultural knowledge, only to uh -huh. rediscover it in the 19th and 20th century. <laughs> Nice. And I want to say hello to Michael Parker West because he was my student. Oh, wow. And, okay. and Michael is in the picture that I, the title, the title, he's in behind one of the, the pillars. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. He Hi, gave Michael. Me, he gave me his email address so, so I could uh, send him the issue. Yeah. He mentioned that to, uh, it was so Everybody. nice to see him. 2007, yeah. Yeah, right at the beginning of the program. He he can vouch for your incredible impact with her work. He's one of uh, your students. He's here. Can you let him speak? He's he's still here. You can unmute. Yeah. Unmute Michael. There. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you for uh, putting oh. this on. This was very good to hear this stuff. It's so nice to see you, Michael. Yes, yes, I'm I'm learning a lot. There's a lot of math that I it still goes over my head, but I think that there's a lot of this stuff that I it's fascinating to hear just how uh passionate you are in digging into this math and also just how how connected the math is to their lived experience, right? Like math is often seen from I'll just speak for, you know, when I grew up in learning math, it was sort of devoid of uh tangible objects it was sort of deliberately separate from that right versus the chronological calendar is a modification of that base 20 system because of the of the annual solar calendar so it's interesting to hear how important lived real lived experience things connects to math in cultures that are not just european in in in, in background so thank you for that And I want to say thank you to Yannick. He's tuning in from Germany. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. Unless anybody else wants to unmute and ask a question. I'll give it a minute. Well, I, I, I just thought I'd mention that um, 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 if you read the, the history of the conquest of the province of, uh, uh, of the Itza, you've, I'm trying to remember the friar here real quickly, uh, but uh, he debated point on point with the Itza, with the Itza scribes uh, that, you know, the Katoon has ended and, uh, you, you know, you must submit to a new rule and a new kingdom. Um, and he actually wrote a treatise on um, Maya uh, hieroglyphic writing, uh, and yet it, it's been lost. So there were learned friars who learned the Maya system, uh, whether to learn it for, to learn the acts of deviltry, or they themselves were equally fascinated by it. Uh, and they recorded what they knew, but their, um, uh, their writings never uh never lasted the test of time how when at what point was that with the itza when but uh yeah so this is where uh, they got uh, down into guatemala or uh correct there um and um i'm trying to remember the um uh the friar that that that, that debated uh, point on point he he basically learned Maya writing so he could debate the 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 wow. cartoon prophecies with them point on point. Huh. It's it's really extraordinary, you know. Oh, hopefully his manuscript will come to life, but we don't know. Um, yeah. So I'm just I'm really 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 excited about this new dimension of uh, of numerology and mathematics and how it relates to. 
uh, the mythos of the gods themselves, because each of these gods who were numbers have an origin story. And we're mm -hmm. just beginning to uncover that origin story, like the origins of the god of zero that makes mm -hmm. counting to infinity imp uh, uh, possible, the origins mm -hmm. of the god of number one and number three, you know, mm -hmm. the origins of the god of number four, which is the sun god. So the god is the sun god is the number four. And so it relates to the four quadrants, you know, and the four positions on the horizon. So all this deep, deep mythos that's related uh, to mathematics and sort of positional astronomy is embedded in the lives and the profiles of these gods. And we're just starting to learn. <laughs> Great. Well, I thank you, Carl, but uh, especially Jimena. And do you say Jimena or is it Ximena? Jimena. Jimena. Okay. Yes, you said it well, that's fine. <laughs> Um, you know Spanish. Yeah, I, I said it more Spanish than Maya. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm sure we'll get a lot of mileage out of the recording. Uh, hundreds of more people will get be able to learn from you and what you've shared here tonight on their own time rather than showing up at a particular time. I can understand that. But yeah. thank you, thank you so much. And thank you for giving the opportunity to speak. Ciao. <laughs> All right. Adios, everyone. Adios. Thank you for tuning in.